what is it with organization and how does it affect what goes on in the timeline? It's incredible that the, the amount of complexity that you'll be going through in this very, very simple tool, it's basically two part. You've got the think part and you've got the do part, right? But the thinking part is obviously analyzing, pulling apart, um, measuring, seeing what you've got and what's it like what you have. And then the doing part is making uh, structured value judgments. And when we structure, we punctuate. Two different meanings, different punctuation, same, same letters. Uh, I think that's a great example for editing. And the more I've studied this, the more I realize that, that grammar, the grammar of writing is in fact, is, is very, very similar to the grammar of editing. What about value judgments? What's the nature of the material that we have? And what's its relationship to this story? And the story, you're thinking of theme. What do we want to say? You're thinking of plot. What's the logical progression of the story, of, of um, occurrences? Uh, you're thinking of style. Style will come last, of, of course. Um, uh, and you're thinking about characterization. This is like a very, very simple 101 of story structure, classic story structure. Uh, that's just a three act. But I will be using conventions like this to see the material from a, another point of view. In short, uh, this is basically what we do. Because of the, uh, the nature of editing, there's always an abundance of material. And we humans can only ingest a certain amount of information and contain it. So we have to, 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 we have to condense information. And this is where I think Final Cut is really, really good. Um, condensing information with all the smart collections and the keyword collections and the filtering. And there's an ebb and flow going on between um, the doing part and the metaphysical side. And the great thing that I like about this tool is the fluidity of the ebbing and flowing. The designers have, I think, either consciously or subconsciously understood that about the editing tool. Now, I've got a very special, I thought I'd give you the world premiere of this film. Now, the film will be premiered on the, the 28th of, I think, is it October in Finland. And um, oh, so this is the world premiere <laughs> of, so we're going to show it to the first this side and then to the next side. This is the timeline. <laughs> and and uh, just put it up on the screen as well. I'm going to lay it on the floor and you can all come and have a look at it. What you're seeing is just a bunch of, of clips. But within those clips are, are abstracts, abstract meanings. Concepts like love and death and the psyche of man at war. It's not science, it's their opinions, of course, and it's, it's, um, it's a point of view. But it takes a lot of time. With this film, we, got a, we generated a lot of material, or the director generated a lot of material, because of his, his method of uh, directing. He's, he is really searching for the unexpected, the natural. One of the things that Akulohimias uh, often says, do we believe this? Do I believe in this? Is it really, truly believable? Uh, so his method of directing does generate a lot of material. The cameras are going. We've got three cameras all the time, and then for... Bigger scenes will have, obviously, much more cameras. This is our setup, or well, my setup at the moment. Very simple. There's no bells and whistles. It's just a, a Mac Pro, uh, late 2013, editing using uh, Pro's proxy, uh, 1080, the 24, um, using a regular off-the-shelf Lacey 8 terabyte Thunderbolt uh, with a separate USB 3 small drive just for the cache. And, um, and then backups. This is the library of the film. When you open it up, you can see it's very complex or it's big. But again, this is what it looks like, what we just saw, when it's all neatly stacked. This is how I would separate my material, put it into four acts with the footage in here. This would be the mapping. Many characters, uh, a lot of action, long take. So I need to break things down and comprehend and see the forest for the trees, I need to break down the scene. And I, that's why I use smart collections as bins and keyword collections 
um, to break down the scene. So you see the smart collection is 37, so it's scene 37. To click that, everything about 37 is there. Then I've got 37A, B, and C. So here I've just broken it down for this particular scene. OK, A is when they go from here to there. B is the center. There's a pivotal plot point there uh, within the scene. And then C is the aftermath or this part. So, that's, so when I'm working on a particular portion of the scene, I can limit myself to viewing only the clips that are necessary to be seen at that moment. About keywords, by the way, it's not that easy to come up with the keywords so that they are consistent, concise, and precise. Um, a lot of the work that goes in before the actual edit starts, of course, you've read the script, you've analyzed the story, you've, you've got a good idea of what the director has conceptualized for, for this and that, you've seen the storyboards, you've read the, the history, you understand the tactics, what's going on, you've seen the old images, you've ingested a lot of that world. That helps you form accurate keywords. And this is the sequence Marsh. It's a big sequence, you can't see there, but it has eight hours, six minutes of material. I've put this purposely here so it's grouped by camera angles, not by scene or shot number. Bringing it down so I can comprehend what's going on, this is one way how I use multicam clips. I can look at the multicam clip when I'm going through the material for the first time. And I can say, OK, right, so A camera is over there, B camera was filming this character doing that, and C camera was there and you just get an overall grasp of what's going on. So here I'm using an, an adjective, or is this a verb, uh, as a keyword. For, um, so scene 24, so the keyword has to have 024 in front of it, otherwise it's going to go, it'll, it won't be relevant to this particular scene. Uh, it's uh, the C portion, and I've put in here for myself uh, a pivotal, pivotal point of that scene, the character is frozen. So now that eight hours has now been condensed to just 31 minutes. So when I'm working on that portion of the scene, which is very, very vital for this scene, I've only got 30 minutes of material to go through. Then the genius of this, of whoever came up with this, the, the favorites and, and, and show rejected, are uh, fantastic. I can go from the 30 minutes and make my selects to just three minutes. I like that, I like that, I like that. I don't know why, but it's good. Probably wouldn't work in this film, but I'm going to mark it just for the heck of it. Um, because, you know, you never know when luck comes along and, oh, actually, I can use that part. Compound clips. I've generally noticed that when the sequence is about an hour, after that, you'll see some stickiness. When I'm just tweaking, it's OK. I can do that in the, in the big timeline. But if I know, OK, I'm going to spend at least an hour or two on this scene, then I'll just make a compound clip take it off the master sequence, work in that compound clip, and it's working again like nobody's business. It's incredibly fast. Work on the scene, bring it back into the master. This is towards the end of the edit, We're using markers, so we use cut notes. Uh, I'll have cut notes, the director will have cut notes, we'll each get 100 odd moments that, oh, we need to... Um, we need to look at this part, look at that part. So this is, this is like a very late stage in editing when you've, you've got a pretty clear idea of where you're trying to get to. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, I put it onto one screen, but I usually have the presentation screen would be on a separate monitor and the client monitor, obviously, for the director. And by the way, it's worth noticing that each clip has been synced these, these will have like usually eight channels of audio that are hidden. And I think you could have seen some sometimes. I would open up the channels because you, you need to silence some of them. I think this is also relevant to editing. Uh, we try to find the reason to harmony. Uh, we try to, when we lock off that cut, it should be that there's nothing more to take away and nothing more to be added. It's very difficult. <laughs> we don't always succeed, but hopefully we've succeeded this time. Uh, do go and see the film when it's, when it's coming to a theater near you. Thank you very much.